Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is a tutorial on shooting with your weak foot. So the most important thing to remember when we're using our weak foot that should give us confidence to use it effectively is knowing that the technique for your non-kicking foot is exactly the same as the technique for your strong foot. And I really don't like calling it your weak foot because that suggests there's some kind of weakness in the leg with your muscles or something like that. You have the exact same muscles, it's the exact mirror of your strong foot. You just need to get a connection between the brain and that leg. There's nothing wrong with it itself. You just need to adapt and learn to use it. It's kind of like when you use your non-writing hand to try and write. It's very awkward, your brain isn't registered using it in that way before. So you just need that repetitive practice over and over again, applying the same fundamental skills that you use for your dominant foot. So as I already mentioned, the weakness itself isn't in the kicking leg, it's the connection between the brain and the body in this new movement that you're not used to doing. So not only are we using the opposite leg for the kicking motion itself, we're also using the opposite foot when we plant, the opposite arm when we extend for balance. Every single motion that we make in this movement is brand new. And so what we need to do is we need to break it down into the fundamental technique of shooting that you would use with your strong foot and try and mirror that technique in all the steps. So it's almost like you're learning to shoot all over again, just with the other side of the body. And I think this is where a lot of players get it wrong. They're focusing too much on the swinging of the leg itself and making the connection with their weak foot, that they're forgetting to do the other steps as well, like extending your arm, leaning over the ball, planting your foot towards your target, and all these different things. So let's go back to the basics and talk about all the different steps that are needed for an effective shooting technique. So let's go back to the very basics of shooting. And I'm usually a right-footed player, so for a run-up, I'm gonna approach it from the left-hand side, almost straight on, maybe one step to the left, so that when I get to the ball, I have enough room to plant my foot at my target and enough room for my swinging leg to come through and make that clean connection. And so if I'm gonna shoot with my left foot, I'm gonna be slightly on the right-hand side of the ball, almost straight on, but one step to the right, so that I can approach it and do the exact same thing. I'm basically trying to mirror the exact technique that I use for my dominant foot. So I'm gonna approach the ball, plant my foot beside it, not too far, but not too close at the same time, so I'm not gonna catch my heels. So you're pointing it maybe six inches or so away from the ball, and I'm pointing exactly where I want the ball. So if I want it to go into the left-hand side of the goal, or the right-hand side, depending, let's say I'm going for this left-hand side, I'm gonna point my toes right towards that corner, because that's when my leg comes through and swings, it will go in that direction, it's gonna increase your chances of accuracy. The next point is when you've actually planted your foot, you wanna have a slight bend in the knee for balance. If you think about it, you're essentially standing on one leg for a split second of time. So if you're off balance, you're not gonna be able to hit the ball where you want it. You're probably gonna to lean too far back or skew it wide or something like that. And now you're used to standing on your dominant planting foot. So for me, my dominant planting foot is my left-hand side. I'm used to planting on my left and swinging through with my right. So this time I need to adjust and get used to planting with my right foot. So it's gonna feel a little different if you've spent most of your life planting on one leg dominantly. It's gonna feel like you're slightly unbalanced with your opposite foot. So it's gonna take a little bit of practice. So all I'm doing is I'm having a good stride. So we'll talk through it again. Having a good stride, the wider your stride, you can generate more momentum behind the ball. And when you're planting, you're having a slight bend in the knee, just so you're gonna have more stability and more chances of hitting the ball where you want to. Tighten that core, it's just gonna help with your balance as well. Next part we need to talk about is where on the foot we're gonna be kicking the ball with and it's the same as your best spot on your dominant foot as well. So wherever your sweet spot is on, for me, my right foot, I'm gonna try and find that same spot on my left foot because you're built the same. You're basically symmetrical down the middle. Your right foot's the same as your left. So if you get an effect of the ball kicking with your strong foot in a certain way, chances are if you get that technique right with your non-dominant foot, it's gonna have the same results. So for me, it's on the laces, slightly to the right-hand side. This very dense part of the bone. Some people call it the sweet spot. But that's the area I'm gonna be looking to make connection with the ball. I see a lot of players when they're shooting with their non-dominant foot, they try and play it safe. 
using too much of the inside of their foot because they've got a bigger surface area, which is more chance of getting a good connection on the ball. But you just really can't generate the right kind of power you want, especially if you're shooting from distance. This is more for those short range finishes using this part of the foot. But if you're trying to shoot with some power and some accuracy, you really want to try and find the sweet spot. And it might be slightly different for you. So just experiment around this top area of the foot where the bones are nice and dense. So the next point is your backswing, and this is where all the power is generated from. A lot of people think it's from the follow through, but the power itself actually comes from the backswing. So you want to get maximum backswing as possible. So almost as far as your heel can go towards this area, almost like you're going to do a quad stretch. But as you approach the ball and plant towards it, you want that maximum backswing. So you're going to be on one leg, your leg is going to be nice and high, and you're going to need that arm out for balance as well. So this is gonna be a little bit of getting used to. Usually for me, I've got my left arm extended when I'm taking a shot, if I'm shooting with my right foot. So it does take a bit of getting used to using my opposite arm as well. It does feel a little bit unnatural, but these are all the key elements to a successful shooting technique. So always remember, you need maximum backswing. I think this is another area where I see a lot of people using their weak foot. They don't get enough backswing because they're hesitant to use their non-kicking foot. So they don't think about getting enough backswing. They almost have a sh too short of a backswing and it just decreases the amount of power they can get through the shot. The next part in all shooting techniques is the area of the ball you want to be hitting. And it's exactly the same as your dominant foot. Wherever you hit sweetly on the ball with your strong foot is where you're going to hit sweetly with your non-dominant foot as well. And for me, it's hitting right through the center of the ball, sometimes a little bit just below. So you get that tiny bit of backswing that allows it to drive through the air nice and low. And then it rises at the last second. It's very difficult for the goalkeepers to save. So again, using that sweet spot of the foot, pointing towards your target, you really want to come through that area making contact. So you've got that big backswing, then you're coming through making a clean connection between the sweet spot and the area of the ball. So for me, just below the center and almost like you're drawing a line from your target and that's where you'll find your center spot. Then you just kick just below it if you want to create a little bit of backswing. That's always most effective for me. Figure out what's best for you. And then I'm going to start to follow through towards my target that's gonna allow it to be more accurate as well. So if you follow through towards your target, chances are the ball is gonna travel in that direction. The next part is your follow through. And this is where I see a lot of players getting it wrong when they're using the dominant foot. The follow through seems to be a bit weak because they're not confident, they haven't stitched all those previous steps together. But if you've stitched them all really well up until this point, really focus on those each fundamental steps for an effective shot, then this should just flow naturally. And for me, what generates the most power and accuracy is when I leave my standing foot after I've made contact and start to follow through with the ball. So what I see with a lot of players using their non-dominant foot after they've struck the ball, they let their legs swing and they just kind of try and stay on their non-kicking foot, their planted foot, and it kind of makes them go off balance. But if you're nice and confident and you've put all the previous steps together, as you strike through that ball and your chest upon contact, you snap down and another thing as well, your arm, as you make contact with the ball, it should go in the opposite direction of your leg, like a snapping effect, like this. This is gonna generate a lot of power. Keep that core nice and tight and make a really explosive movement. And that's really gonna help with it. It's gonna help you snap that hip flexor and give the leg the maximum power through the swing. So as you make contact, your arms coming down, you start to crouch over the ball to make sure it doesn't sky over the bar and then you're following through towards your target, and then you actually come off of your standing leg and land back on your kicking foot. All right guys, so that's the tutorial on shooting with your weak foot, and hopefully you picked up on the fact that there's nothing different than shooting with your non-dominant foot than there is shooting with your weak foot. It's all about just refreshing your memory, going through all those pointers. The problem is when you shoot with your strong foot, if you've been shooting for many, many years, you don't even need to think about these steps. It all comes very naturally. So all it is is relearning the process from the ground up, from the very foundation of the first step of shooting all the way through to the follow through. You've got to relearn it all over again. And then the main thing is just practicing over and over and over again and building the connection between your brain and your body. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in the next video.